My mom told me not to talk to strangers on the internet, but I'm glad I didn't listen. We are the Certified Nunas, your scissors in the love of Asian entertainment. Hi, I'm Amanda. I'm Jesse. I'm Natalia. And I'm Sky. That's right. All four of us are here again, baby. <laughs> That's right. You may have missed us. We'll be back. Uh, and today we have very serious. No, it's not a serious topic. It's, <laughs> we just wanted to talk about something that uh, is a common affliction that happens to many people in the drama community. And uh, I'm going to like hand it over to Sky because this was really her idea for this episode. And she's going <laughs> to tell us all about drama drives. Mostly, I was kind of considering the fact that for some people, this might be something that you talk with your drama watching buddies a lot. So who who hasn't heard of drama ruts before? But the reality is, I think it took me quite a while when I after I started watching dramas and really getting into them and kind of getting a part of a online social media community speaking about them. Mm. Um, it probably took me quite a while to actually hear someone having a drama rut and mm. what on earth that was. Um, and yeah, kind of talking about that. And I think it kind of also leads into discussions of what it means to kind of be a fan in a media consumption mm. community of sorts. And there, you don't have, there's no have tos. Like you, you, yeah. don't, you mm. don't have to do anything. <laughs> yeah, I you don't. Mm. I feel like a lot of this problem comes from like this sort of a need to treat everything a little bit like a competition and like that you yes, have to keep yes. up with everything and you have to watch all of the shows that are out and you have to watch what everyone else is watching and and then it leads to burn and people get burnt out on watching yeah. shows which is wild well even when it's not a competition like it's more of you just there's so much out there and so many people are talking about things. So then you want to be able to be part of those conversations. And there's just Uh so many conversations and then you keep on trying to watch like all these things so that you could, you know, keep being part of the community. And then it just crashes into you. And like, cause it just like all catches up with you that you're like burning out on like watching too many hours and taking up most of your free time watching stuff kind of almost like, taking too many credits in college or like, you know, like you're just like, Oh, I really can't do this. It was fun. The first bit, but I'm old now. (laughs) Well, And I think sometimes your, your life changes, right? Like something Mm -hmm. changes, you get a new job or you have a baby or whatever. And like maybe before you had lots of drama watching time and now you don't. And like, so you have to be pickier about things, but maybe, the fear of missing out makes it too hard for you to mm. choose mm-hmm. what things to watch. So you just kind of don't watch anything. Like there's a lot of different reasons why we mm. fall away. And then there's, I, I find there's like a, a sort of a secondary thing that I see happening. That's like a second type of drama rut where people just aren't enjoying anything that they're watching, mm-hmm. but don't just stop watching it. And then, are like, oh, there's no good dramas out anymore. No, you're just not having a good time watching them. So do some, you know. So I, th- yeah. I see that quite often as well, which I feel like it's like a two-pronged situation all leading into the drama rut world. Well, so I will say, I think I think possibly the first time I encountered the whole concept of a drama rut, and mm. I, I will not be able to tell you if it was me experiencing one or somebody else or whatever, but... And there's really no other word to call this. But if you do watch a show you really like, Mm. really like, Mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be a binge. It can be. Mm -hmm. Um, It can be a super quick binge or something. Or it can just be something you fell in love with. Absolutely. And it's just, it's akin to when you... Like find a book series that you yeah, just follow. Books, up with. I think, are w- where you're gonna find the yeah. ruts a lot with the same type of feeling. Yeah, where it's like and then, you love it so much. It hit different. Not, yeah, you can't. You haven't found that like same emotional like response uh-huh. out of anything else, and you just like kind of yearn for it. Yeah, the yeah. dopamine. And, and, it's not hitting like it used to. <laughs> And so for dramas, it might be like, let's say you fell in love with something that has beautiful cinematography or something. And so you finish it, you were in love, 
you, you have that emptiness afterwards and then nothing looks as pretty to you mm-hmm. yep. as far as from that or the character none of these other characters that you're encountering are even close to as shiny or well thought out or whatever right mm. but um i think that like i think that's kind of a fun uh, that like that's kind of like the the funnest version of a drama yeah. that you can encounter yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still val. The reality is, it is a problem. Like mm-hmm. as far as if you're kind of wanting to watch dramas and pick some up and actually enjoy them, mm-hmm. but you really did f- almost fall too hard for something, and so mm-hmm. it is hard to like, pick back <laughs> yeah. up. I remember uh, back when the first Hunger Games movie came out. Um, I had really enjoyed the books, and so I was really excited to go see the movie. And I watched the movie, and it was really good. Okay, I think we can all just look back on them, whatever your opinions, and be like, "Yeah, those were pretty good movies, yeah. right?" Yeah. And I remember being like, for like a week after watching that movie, I was so depressed because I was like, "One, the movie is depressing." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Right. Two, yeah. But two, I had like been so excited, and then when it was done, I was like, "Okay, that was great." <sighs> But now I'm the emotional weight of the film is now on me. <laughs> but I also think so like that example, I think a good thing to take away from that is essentially if you find if you find like a drama that you just mm-hmm. loved, you have a lot of it, be it excitement or thrill, if it's a thriller or what, like you're super into it. And so mm-hmm. you have all these emotions and it's fulfilling a lot of different needs yeah. mm-hmm. and Something to, like, if it's something that's currently airing, it's something you're looking forward to, like, mm-hmm. if you're keeping up with it. Or if you did a binge, like, you spent however many hours of your life watching this thing. Uh-huh. And so you experienced all these emotions, and then after that, it's, like, nothing. Like, yeah, it's and you're like, well, what do I vacuum. Do like, and you're, like, <laughs> lost. You're just like, um, okay, I don't even know how to, like, begin to figure out things anymore and figure out like what I want to watch. And the thing is, so some people, and also some people get really into the specific fandom of even one show, Mm -hmm. which Mm -hmm. that's totally valid. Like if that's something that people dig doing, you know, just like there's fandoms just for a single actor or actress, like Mm -hmm. it's all whatever. So with different social medias and things, you can always be chasing like all the gifts or all the, yeah fan chasing the memories behind the scenes videos or yeah Yeah. um so there there's a lot that you could like kind of even keep feeding into that so that that is that is actually thing so if you need if you need to still get some juice out of your (laughs) drama yeah go for some behind the scenes stuff keep squeezing that lemon like (laughs) yeah (laughs) keep going and the reality is i think we've all had stuff that we liked so much that even if it wasn't like a drama rut type situation, it, you at least kind of had the thought and then you might have still gone, well, I'm going to start rewatching this immediately. Like, yeah. that's another mm-hmm. way to do it. If you really need more time with a show, a character, whatever, as far as if life is giving you the time to do that, mm. there's no one stopping. If, if you need to spend more time with a show, do it. Listen, fine. I've, I've found myself on AO3 more than... One time, just <laughs> chasing the memories in new and exciting ways, which is... But, but I mean, you're also a good example of, like, you've watched Cutie Pie okay. a lot of times. I'm not giving you a bad time, <laughs> but the point is, you enjoyed it so much, and you like returning to it, and that's mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. fine. If someone gets joy out of that and they have time to do it, go for it. It's fine. Mm. But, so, like, we're kind of just talking about the... The drama rut feeling mm. of the, kind of that vacuum. Mm. But I do think the the funnest version of drama rut is essentially you had such a good time yeah. with something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and it's a very unique feeling. The, yes. Then you're in a drama rut. And it's almost like, it's almost, it's kind of like a medal. Like in your drama watching yeah. life, in my opinion. When you finally hit one of those, it's like fun. It was like, yeah. the, let me tell you, the week after finishing Happiness... Oh god! <laughs> Whoa, that was, oh. that was. I was just like, this was too good, though. Like, this was too good. Uh, Goblin, I think, was a, another one oh, that yeah. did that to people because it was just so pretty, right? Like the production so val- values were so high, and a lot of people that was their first drama. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. And so then, 
you know. What a drama. To that is the first you drama. Know, what a, what a letdown. That was, I just remember, that was, you know, like, I had been watching dramas at that time. I still lived in Halifax, and I would go over to my two, my two friends' house, because they were sisters, and they lived together. And, uh, hey, Ashley, Amanda, feels me. Um, and, uh, we would watch K-dramas together, and then, so we had watched, like, a bunch, and they were really enjoying them, and then we watched Goblin, and Amanda used to work in film, and she was like, huh, this one looks like they got the money money. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, (laughs) nope. They did, indeed. Uh, But, so, Amanda, were you saying that you had a drama right after Goblin? Is that what you are saying? I didn't, but, um, but I do remember just having that thought when that series ended that this was going to change things for a lot of drama we- watchers, mm-hmm. that they were going to have a struggle now, like that mm-hmm. that they were going to have to go back into my drama list and like change their ratings for everything <laughs> because their standard was going to change. And, you know, well, like, it, it, and just kind of like we joked about, we, we kind of do periodically joke about if someone if the first if the first main Asian drama that you kind of, that gets you into the drama watching, like, community or whatever, mm. if it's one of those super high quality ones, it's like, ooh, good luck. Not that there aren't other high quality <laughs> dramas now. Of course there are. But it's just kind of, the, the reason we joke about it is quite often the people that start off with not as slick looking stuff, yeah. Our bars are kind of low. Like, it's really not that hard. Of, like, yeah. listen, when you start with Boys Over Flowers, let me tell you. <laughs> like, you can watch anything. <laughs> like, fine, let's go. You're like, hmm. Only up, only up. Oh, it's, it's like, uh, the upward trajectory from, like, the, you know, the average 2010 drama is chef's kiss. Yeah. Well, and I think it depends, too, on, on what what that theme is too right so with something like goblin or happiness like if if somebody says oh i need to find that again i need that you know and ask for recommendations well <laughs> you're like oh, um, good luck friends like, if i if you shirt. really loved goblin and you want more of that supernatural goodness it does not come with those pro- production values mm-hmm. most of the time like it, it, we get a lot of mid quality supernatural stuff and it's good and it's fun but like we now have some options though like we got that's true true. now we got those like ghost is pretty good we got Mm -hmm. you know so there's there's oh yeah there's definitely options it's just you always you know if somebody asks like oh what else is like happiness like what are you gonna say (laughs) nothing (laughs) nothing 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 i can suggest you some zombie stuff but it's not gonna be it's not like happiness you know like well even even if someone was like hey i have a huge alchemy of soul shaped hole in my heart i'd be like (laughs) buddy you might as well just start a rewatch because (laughs) i'm not i i can't do much you could try Earth, though, maybe? But, like, <laughs> maybe, my gosh, like, I, I guess I maybe, like, now you're moving out of Korea. I guess. Like, like, there's, there's yeah. options, I suppose. How, how do you, do you feel about... Dramas? Yeah, so, how do you feel about China? <laughs> <laughs> do you really like it? <laughs> how long of a show are you willing to watch? Yeah, like... You, you did 30. Like, if you count it like, all together, you did 30 you episodes. How feel about, like, 60? Because <laughs> <laughs> there's a show called Ice Fantasy with your name on it. Yeah. I'm kidding. Uh, not as good as Alchemy of Souls. True, true, plot, true plot. But, I mean, just, I mean, one example is you can just kind of revel in the the fun of the show like whatever mm-hmm. show it is or rewatch it i mean yeah because i think i think one one for me that i definitely i think got a drama rut it i definitely got a drama rut after healer for me and mm-hmm. healer was a little yeah. earlier on in my yeah. drama watching stuff and then um i definitely got one after because this is my first life mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah because mm-hmm. you ladies had built it up so much so that's what made me interested mm-hmm. in watching it and then when so I say I binged it, for you. I know yeah. me too. I've been like, oh, I'm there. <laughs> but I, I think a more dangerous one is when you so like you're into the show, but not only do you do a binge, you actually commit to doing an almost overnight binge. Like yes. you, yeah, 
you stay up late. Yeah, you have that with hangover. That. So you actually have a physical hangover from what you right. did to your body to watch this mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that you're experiencing the motions of the vacuum hole in your heart, but then it's like, oh, I need to actually take care of myself now, <laughs> like, yeah, to be a person. No I'm also a human being who has <sighs> human needs, damn it. <laughs> So, um, I, I did want to go over, like, some, so we'll kind of talk about some things that can help you get out of the drama rut, so we kind of already went over some stuff. But mm-hmm. one thing that I did want to really highlight and talk about, and I kind of already hinted towards earlier, um, and we kind of talked about, like, the competition stuff, or just kind of the vibes that you feel like mm-hmm. you always need to be keeping up, especially if you're someone mm-hmm. that enjoys watching currently airing shows and talking about it with your friends or whatever you do, um, there's there is there's pressure there kind yeah. of mm-hmm. and and sometimes life does shift sometimes it's a big shift like that can cause an extended period of time away from dramas and or mm. or a lot of your hobbies that you maybe want to spend time doing and you just can't like no. it can be just an emotional state of mind thing it can be grief it can be just change of life for a little bit and it can, or it can just be not wanting to press play, and that is yeah. fine. Yeah. Like, and I don't want anyone to think that if you're in a place where you can't be watching a show or whatever's on, don't feel like you need to, and don't yeah. force stuff. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you're any less of a fan <laughs> or yeah. a part of the community that you have chosen to be a part of, whatever that is. Um, mm-hmm. We've all been there and we're going to continue to be there. Like, and you have to remember, you could apply it to all your other hobbies too. Like yeah. this is a hobby. Mm-hmm. This is to have fun or enjoy. Mm-hmm. And there are times in life that you're just not going to either have time to do that or have the mental capacity to handle it. And that is legitimate and fine. And if it takes mm-hmm. you literal years before you press play again, that is That's fine. okay. Yeah. They're literally, yeah. if anyone judges you, punch him in the face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why we'll, yeah. we'll go get him for Do you. That. Yeah. It's advice from old Natalia. Okay. Like, <laughs> you know, just fuck him. That's Listen to your elders. <laughs> that's right. Now, 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 as far as. As far as the fun drama rut that we were talking about, like, you know, you have a show that you really like and then you have mm-hmm. a drama rut. Usually they don't last that long. No, yeah. Like, no, usually, no, you know, usually there's something. a new show that comes that, that gives you that dopamine. Or, or you do something again, where, you know? like, because you're, like, so into it, you start to, like, look at, like, other work from the mm-hmm. person. And that kind of, like, gradually gets you out of that rut because then you just kind of go back to, like, normal watching Mm-hmm. And I I will say like if you if you do have to have an extended period away from dramas for quite a while, and if at that point it seems too overwhelming to come back in with all the new stuff and it's just chaotic, just try to remember something that you did really like. Maybe go back to one of them that you just super enjoyed, or your first mm-hmm. one, or whatever was charming or easy for you. Whatever that is. Yeah. Um, there's no reason to make this hard. Like, no, it, it's yeah, all supposed it's to be a good time. It's supposed to be fun. So, <laughs> like. I think for me, like one of the biggest things that I do is switching the content that I watch. And I think that, like, you can apply this in very different ways. But for me personally, going to watch like K-pop and variety shows mm-hmm. are like the best way to get out of a rut for me. Because it's, like, switched enough that, like, I'm still, like, surrounded by those actors and surrounded by, like, the culture that you see in the shows and that sort of thing. But, like, it's just different enough that, like, it gets me back into watching stuff. Mm. But, like, yeah. someone else might, like, be, it be, might present itself in, like, you're watching, maybe you're watching rom-coms all the time. So switch to a mellow or switch to, like, a straight comedy, you know? Like, yeah. mm-hmm. switch it up there or, like, even different countries like if you're just like in korea and doing stuff like go to another country and then you have like this like new oh, exciting new. Thing to like you know go to and see all the sites or you could be like yeah. natalia and just have the most unhinged catalog <laughs> of content you consume but just, just none don't of it think, makes push sense. play <laughs> just like listen i recently started watching uh, a YouTube series of someone playing the game Crusader Kings, 
which is the most boring video game you've ever heard of. Let me tell you. <laughs> and yet I am entranced. YouTube like, is a... Uh, oh, YouTube is a, a suckhole. A sucker, yeah. Yeah. But but I think that is the thing. There are there are some days that even though I might not be in a drama rut per se because it doesn't really last like days on end necessarily, mm-hmm. but it might be a couple days. Um, yeah, I'll I'll pick up a variety show or I'll just watch some music videos and like that that's enough fun. Sometimes it's just revisiting my favorite music videos and just kind of going through that. But other time other times like if you are kind of in a rut or sometimes. Sometimes another hobby just comes and smacks you upside the head and is like, yeah. hey, remember, you either used to like doing this thing or you were halfway interested in this once. Well, time to push you down that rabbit hole. And so you, you kind of sometimes get sucked into something else for a while. Ah, the ADHD yeah. method. Yeah. <laughs> Hyper fixate on something new. Hey, oh. But, but yeah. especially, especially like, um, sometimes, it, not to get like too deep about whatever motivates you to watch dramas but sometimes it's hey i'm having a good narrative time like i like mm-hmm. storylines or oh, something wow. and sometimes it's like what what feeds that desire for storyline sometimes it's reading be it uh-huh. physical or audiobook yeah. sometimes it's oh what's this people playing dungeons and dragons that i've never even watched before but like this story is darn good and super mm-hmm. engaging mm-hmm. I'm uh-huh. now hooked on that. Like, so uh-huh. there's all types of stuff out there that if you're, if you kind of have a narrative itch, there's a lot of stuff that can scratch that. And so you don't, yeah, you don't have to limit yourself, but also, if you are in a drama mood, yes, definitely go check out other countries. Sometimes it's even, oh yeah, that English speaking stuff. I kind of <laughs> did want to watch this three years ago, but I've been ignoring it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, no, I don't know her. I don't know her. You know? I, I think that is a big one for some people because they get into a place where they just don't, like, especially this time of year um, in North America, you get a lot of people who in February have the, like, the seasonal blues and stuff, and they just don't have the energy mm-hmm for mm-hmm. subtitles like they don't have the energy to read a book so they're only listening to audios and even then sometimes they can't follow a storyline or like mm-hmm. they can't watch subtitles because they just can't read mm-hmm. and watch at the same time right now the energy is just not there so like yeah watch something english like mm-hmm. i just binged through a bunch of like cozy british murder mystery series <laughs> over w- christmas holidays mm-hmm. And, like, those are really good, like, anything BBC and stuff, Mm -hmm. because they have short little seasons. So if that's what you like about K-dramas is is that it's, like, only 10 or 16 episodes, like, the BBC has got you covered. Like, it's, Mm. you know... like miniseries of any sort, like, you know, they're... A lot of the Neil Gaiman type stuff. There's a lot yep. of audio stories out yeah. there. There are some of the like shows that they, that were made and stuff. Like, there's some really good yeah. stuff. Exactly. I uh, I also read a lot of webtoons when I just mm. can't really focus on TV. Yeah. Oh, I love I love me some isekai, as you know me. Uh, so that's that's an option that you can do. Yeah. 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 Oh, one thing about like if you are if you're somebody that maybe hasn't put your toe into other countries yet um other like asian countries specifically east asian countries specifically to check out like their dramas we actually did do a podcast episode about that Mm -hmm. um so you can check that on our website and i'm sure we'll link it but it's continental explorations the title of that podcast episode and we kind of go over some of that stuff and so it might be a little good intro for you Mm -hmm. if you're curious about kind of what the what we think the strengths are of certain things or what you might be interested in. So we talked about that and kind of now I will tell you as far as where to find things (laughs) that gets dated in like two days. So like basically by the time we like post an episode, it's like already dated. Yeah. Yeah. So like some things are still, some things are still where they were, but um, for instance, yay. J drama is coming more to Netflix Mm -hmm. and Hulu and things like that. Like Mm -hmm. that's great. So th- there yeah. are some more places that we hadn't seen back mm-hmm. then. We kind of joked around with like Natalia, just like picking up anything, but really sometimes like the mental like problem that you're having 
with like getting back into dramas it's like very very small you just don't realize it and like mm -hmm. just by pushing play you get yeah. over it and you, but like you build it so much like so much in your head that you're not thinking about it and so like it is kind of like sometimes the like way to get out of drama rut is just to push play just uh -huh. that as simple mm -hmm. as that or like even just like finding like a routine that like makes it fun like maybe like uh -huh. you always watch it at a certain time or like you always have like tea with like your mm -hmm. viewing like yeah. like little things like that and make it a really nice like comfort time uh -huh. I think that like also helps and I will say like for me I think there are periods of time I kind of get more watching done personally I happen to have a little I have a way to watch dramas whenever I'm on my treadmill and if, mm, if I'm nice. in a time period where that and I enjoy doing that so I'm not pressing like yeah no. exercise on people I'm not saying that I'm saying if, if there's a multitasking type thing that like you're going to be spending time doing this thing anyway and if you have a way to watch dramas while you're doing that thing mm -hmm. cool and yeah. it helps pass the time while you're doing this thing that you might not really want to do as much but um or like if it's or you can put on a show as far as if you're having trouble even consuming anything, if you can't handle subtitles right now, but you just need to get over the barrier of watching anything, fold your laundry while you're watching an English speaking show. Like yeah. just little yeah. little things to start helping you get used to consuming storylines again or whatever. It, and and the reality is if stuff isn't hitting for a while, just take a break. Go yeah. do something yeah. else. Yeah. And just take care of yourself. Mainly just take care of yourself. Yeah. If you're going yeah. through a really rough time, just just take stuff slow. There's no We're reason here to put that. expectations on yourself. Uh -huh. I think, and I think that's a, a, a an important one too, because sometimes the rut has more to do with your mental state, right? And it's yeah. like, and maybe you're, you know, um, Sky mentioned earlier, like maybe you're going through gr mm -hmm. a grieving period or something, and so you're just at a point where it's like, I can't watch anything new right now because mm -hmm. what if somebody dies, or what if somebody has the same thing happened that I yeah, am struggling with right thinking now, about the and I other can't, thing, yeah. I can't watch this in case. So, A, talk to people and, yeah. you know, who, if you see somebody's watching it, say, mm -hmm. does it have the thing, you know, and, like, find out. But, like, the other thing is, go, like we've said, go back and rewatch something that you know mm -hmm. does not have that thing. Yeah. And, you, you know, you know you can go watch weightlifting fairy or whatever and yeah. be happy yeah. about it and just you know yeah and like inherently like is big dramas especially like watching asian dramas they're gonna be more kind of i say taxing like but loosely like taxing on you than mm -hmm. like watching something from your like own language mm -hmm. so like it's it's hard like because it's like if you're in those like states it's going to be hard to read subtitles and process subtitles and the show all at once. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like genuinely just not going to be like the best option for you. And I think like mm -hmm. also acknowledging that like you might feel less like sad about it or like feel like, I don't know, like maybe that like sense of failure almost if you're like, I can't do this right now. And you just feel bad about that, which like will also lead you down your rut even farther yeah. and I think that's like a very like unique thing especially with like watching content that is not of your own language mm -hmm. I think another thing that I see a lot um which I think is a bit of a trap for people mentally is that when you like a show so much and that's one of those like I really like the show you begin to put down every other show in comparison to it where you'll be like, oh, it'll never compare to this. And it's not as good as this, which means that this show That's is trash. No, it doesn't. Like, you've built it up in your head. You should let that go and mm -hmm. enjoy things for what they are. And you'll have a much better time mm -hmm. watching things. As if you're not holding everything up to some insane standard of a show that just dopamine hit you over and over. Yeah. L like, there are some people that are moody watchers. And there are some people that aren't. Like, I know that Jesse is a great example of, like... You know, if, if you have the mental space, Jesse, to watch mm -hmm. something, like, you, you know, your needs and expectations for your the shows are pretty consistent, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whereas, 
if I'm in a certain mood and if I start encountering a show, it depends on what day it is if I like that show or not. Yeah, well, and, like and, people do with that with weather as well. Like even weather will like like yeah, it, you know, make you watch something different. So like, and I think people need to sometimes, and I don't mean it mean check themselves, but as far as like, may, maybe if the show's not hitting right for you, put it to the side. Never. Visit yeah. visit another week, visit next month, visit but just whenever. like never visit again and yeah, move fine. on from it. Yeah. 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 There's no need I to think... watch something you're not enjoying. Unless you're me. And then I have to see where it goes. <laughs> well, that's like, it's such a big thing that like I feel like a lot of people do it. Like they watch something that's not enjoyable and they force themselves to watch it and then they just kind of feel miserable the entire time and they carry over that like like almost like they're they are blaming that one show for everything else not hitting correctly. And Mm -hmm. it's just like that feeling has carried over. So it's kind of like one of those things where you're like, your rut might be because you force yourself into watching something that you shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Or like, you know, it was a genre that like, you're just not into. And it's like, you may have like watched it just because everybody else like does it. And you wanted to be part of the conversation, which is like valid, like, you want to be mm-hmm. part of it, but like if it's not for you, sometimes it's just like kind of even more detrimental to your watching if you just mm-hmm. force yourself into well, it. Well, and if you're a lot of, I find a lot of new drama watchers are initially completionist about stuff. Like they mm-hmm. have to watch all of everything they start, and mm-hmm. so if you're keeping lists and keeping track and stuff and you're like i have 20 dramas that i'm currently watching i can't add something new but i don't want to watch any of those other ones okay then just let them go like Mm -hmm. don't don't fall into that trap of completionism where you have to finish things even if you hate it like just you don't there's nobody is keeping track nobody is keeping tabs Listen, on you. There's Natalia, nothing. as long as it doesn't affect your other watching, it's okay. Like, we understand. <laughs> you understand that I'm mentally ill. Like, <laughs> you like completing things and you like the completing Yeah, you, you yeah. get a Being kick a out of that. That's what gets me out. that dopamine. Right. 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 Yeah. Like, yeah. like, completed on MDL. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. exactly. Check. Like, I'm yeah, in a competition but, with no one but myself and I'm always winning, baby. But yeah, I, I, I do think that some people like like let's say if if they're trying to pick up a variety of different genres within a certain country's media offerings and none of them are hitting for them. It's fine. Take a break. Either go do yeah. something else, check out another country, check out some variety, go do so- mm-hmm. go listen to some music. Or maybe do whatever you stop need to watching, do. Like new stuff and just squarely like pick things Watch that like you can watch shit. all in one like thing yeah. because sometimes like a binge is like the best and right. like sometimes it, a binge is better than watching it airing for certain shows too and, like sometimes like you're in a rut on a show because you're not watching it in the way that like is good for you to consume mm-hmm. the product yep i know that i prefer a binge to a weekly yeah almost uh, almost 99 all the time. times yeah of- 99 yeah. you know <laughs> yeah, yeah i know um one of the things that uh at least one person has told us um with regards to our 12 for 12 challenge is that that's what kind of got them out of their rut was because they not watched dramas in so long that it was like a mountain And you're Mm -hmm. looking at this mountain to scale and going, there's so much. And everybody is telling me all these things are good. And I don't know what. So they looked at our 12 for 12 challenge and said, I can pick one thing from 2011 and watch that. And this did. And that was how they got out of the rut because they had something that narrowed it down for them. And they didn't have to make a decision beyond. Overwhelming choices. You know, like kind of like Natalia had said, she put, you know, most popular in the MDL. And then scrolled and then until I saw one that I hadn't watched. And then you said, know, okay. Uh-huh. Okay. And so if you, if that's what it takes, like if you just can't make the decision, you know, let us essentially make that decision for you. Yeah, you let know? us hold <laughs> your hand into the let, right let direction. The fate, let fate decide, friend. Yeah. Well, that's like really great. Get your friends to like, who you know, know your taste. Get them to like, like recommend for something for you and just like 
watch that because then you don't have the like mental taxation of trying to pick the thing you just watch whatever someone just gives you so Mm. you don't have to think about it and i'll say something for me like i'm sometimes a really serious minded person so if i get into a phase of watching kind of more serious shows and then i essentially burn myself out on that because Mm -hmm. like so we were talking about it's kind of taxing to watch shows already in subtitles because you're already like processing a different Mm way same thing with there are some shows that are either more difficult to follow or just more put you kind of through an emotional ringer especially if they're like based on true story or they're Mm -hmm. tough you know like Mm -hmm. thriller stuff or whatever um so sometimes for me taking that and just shaking it up even just and i think jesse mentioned earlier hopping genres but Mm -hmm. even going specifically for me going from serious to something maybe not ridiculous but like Mm -hmm. oh stupid pretty vampire show sure like why not and even even if i don't here's the thing i sometimes use those types of shows i might not even finish the show like whatever Mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not thinking of a particular show and i'm saying this (laughs) but that was the fictional stupid vampire show or whatever i said um (laughs) I might watch a couple episodes of that just to get me back into mm-hmm. a different headspace. And then maybe that will remind me of something else I wanted to watch that was maybe lighter. Or um, So sometimes I use maybe something on my on hold to like mm. get me out of it. But then if yeah. I don't have the motivation to really finish it, then I'm like, okay, it's going back on hold. That's fine. Like, I've done yeah. that and, numerous times. And, and dear listener, yeah. you can inject whatever stupid vampire show you think she's talking about. <laughs> and you, you should come tweet <laughs> us with what stupid vampire show uh, uh, you Yes, think. you Play should. For the record, all the vampire shows... Suggestions. <laughs> all the vampire shows I have on my on hold, they're not stupid. So I, I was just saying, as far as... Everybody's gonna, like, be friending mm-hmm. Sky and then looking at... <laughs> no, you then like, you're going to be horrified right, at gonna... the amount that is on my on hold because I do this so <laughs> like, much. Why do I keep scrolling? <laughs> <laughs> but mostly, I mean, I'm not saying everyone must be introspective about their watching <laughs> techniques, but sometimes it is a like, oh, is it not bringing me joy? Am I not having fun? Yeah, like Marie Kondo it. Yeah, that's what we're yeah. talking about. Mary Kondo, your drama watching. Does it spark joy? If not, get rid of it. <laughs> get rid of it. Get yeah. out of here. Or just put if that stresses you out, put it on hold. It's lovely. It's fine. Yeah. If, if yeah, or I even if you if you just put it on hold and then you get rid of it like a year or two later, you look back at you know, like I don't even remember how that starts and I don't want to go back. Fine. <laughs> like, you why know? did but, I like, even do this? To moment, you can't, you know? But like if you're a hundreds of tab open type person like me <laughs> you might have a pile of on holds and it might stay there for years that is fine too because you'll never find them because there's too many tabs <laughs> it's true but it it's is okay because it's yeah. just drama it's at the end of the day yeah. it's literally we're just mm-hmm. consuming just like entertainment and and you i know? I do want people to remember that. Like, it's not simply, oh, you need to be having, you should be having fun. It's yeah. also, you know, life's hard. Yeah. Do, please do not make your hobby life something more difficult than it should be. Yeah. It's kind of like, if even if if you create from, because, you know, there's, there's maybe some people listen to us that do have either fellow podcasters, bloggers, content creators related to the drama community or whatever hobby they're doing. Don't put more pressure, as long as you're enjoying what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, if you're not having a good time, unless it's your actual job and you're getting paid a lot of money for it. (laughs) Which, like, for the record, we're not. We're not. (laughs) not But if you would like to help us, (laughs) go to our certified family. I'm kidding. Um... (laughs) We'll talk about that later. But anyway. (laughs) Stay tuned to the end of the episode. It is. It's so true when you are creating content of any form around something you can reach a point where you feel like this is it feels like a job right Mm -hmm. like and it's not entertaining anymore I don't want to watch a drama right now just so I can you know but I have to because if I don't watch something what am I going to talk about well you know what like we've you know we do our what we're watching and some weeks it's like 
I didn't watch anything, so I'm so going to tell you about this book. Literally, that I just read watching X Files again like, for the three thousand. Exactly. Hey everyone, I'm like, just watching Minecraft Let's Plays. <laughs> and that's okay. And I think sometimes we we need to flip that switch in our brain and, and remind ourselves that our yeah. our hobbies Get are out hobbies. Of the, They're for the... fun. Whole, like getting caught up and to be enjoyable caught up with everything i think like a lot of like the times these drama ruts happen because you get caught up in everything which like it it's going to happen because like especially if you're like new and you found like people who like finally like the things that you like it's very exciting and stuff mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. now you're in a like a like you're consuming something much differently than you were before mm -hmm. and so it's getting you out of that like comfort zone or like the way that like is the work like who, what works for you i think that like it does mess up that and that's like what causes the rut a lot of times is that you're just like kind of forcing yourself into a watching habit because of others and because of that like fear of missing out and not being part of a conversation and not being part of the community and it just mm -hmm. like backfires on you because like you reach a certain point where you're just like i can't keep this up yeah mm -hmm. And you shouldn't have to do that because we're you're here to have a good time, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. You know, like you just uh -huh. do, well, bro. Just have a and, time. And, and the reality thing, like things change. Just like, you know, our home mm -hmm. is Twitter, but Twitter <laughs> is what oh, Twitter God. is right now. Uh, so our like, home might be on fire. So even as far as the way that we you know, have discussed things like that on Twitter before, like we might have to shift, you know, things change, like yeah. even, even not in our own personal lives, but sometimes our platforms change or sometimes how something is, how some participatory thing like shifts and you just, you have to accept that and or you have to like move on. Like your budget goes and then you're like, yeah. well, now I only have one place to watch things at all. You yeah, know, it's right. just like yeah. little things can Add up or to or sometimes different... you're just vibing, having a good time, and then drama fever dies. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Sometimes you're vibing, just like you know, planning to start a podcast and being all the great, and then drama fever is like bye. And drama fever is like, <laughs> and then yeah. you have to be like, oh my gosh, our first episode, we're gonna probably do something different. Now we shift. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, it was fun. <laughs> well, it happens all the time, even with like, let's say that you had a certain drama that you really enjoyed that you watched the whole thing of, and you. It was there a couple years ago, right? Like, let's say yeah. Netflix, for instance. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. you can be like, you know, oh, yeah, I really liked this thing. And you, in your head, you're like, for sure it's still on Netflix, right? You go and look, <laughs> it is gone. <laughs> right? yeah. It's like gone from everywhere. It's not yeah. just gone from Netflix. And you're like, why? And then sometimes that thing will come back, right? Like Birdie Buddy was my first drama. And... I, for years, people would say, oh, well, what was your first drama? And you'd say it, and they go, w do you recommend it? I don't know. It's not great, but, like, I had fun. I enjoyed it, right? Mm -hmm. And But it wasn't anywhere. Like, it got, it got Netflix didn't have it anymore, and it wasn't anywhere for a while. And now it's on, like, three different platforms all of a sudden. And you're like, okay. Like, it's back. So now I well, can say to people, it's back if you want to. Like, go ahead. It's also just really interesting, like, kind of related to that. So, like, when I started watching dramas, the whole way I started watching them was just on Netflix, mm -hmm. and I started doing Taiwanese. That's how I started. Mm -hmm. And at in that moment in time, there was a huge, just so of many. a certain time period of Taiwanese dramas, they were just all right there on Netflix. And so, like, it was kind of just the backdrop of what I did. And so then just a few years later all that shifted and a lot of those are gone now uh -huh. and so it's mm. interesting everybody has a different background for like essentially what they could access when they were first new to dramas and how that affected mm -hmm. yeah your first drama but even the f the handful you watched after that right yeah. and yeah and that kind of affects patterns that you maybe even make to watch dramas. It's just fascinating. And yeah, it's all changing. So we just, ha you have to accept the fact that it all changes. You can't say much yeah. about it. Yeah. It's all an ephemeral vibe. <laughs> just, you know, just roll with it. Go with the tide. You, you, know? you do have to start having thoughts and conversations with yourself about how comfortable are you with staying on certain sites or not staying on certain <laughs> sites. You have to consider yeah. that. Mm. Mm. Uh -huh. well, listen, that's between you and whatever deity you believe in. We're not judging. We're not going to tell you 
anything. <laughs> so, are there any specific drama ruts that you ladies ex- like that you remember that you personally experienced at all? Like any funny stories related to any of this stuff? Um. Okay, I'm gonna be real, ladies. I don't really get drama ruts because <laughs> I have no taste. And no shame. So I will watch anything. And then if I'm... Because what will happen to me is if I get sad, then I'll go rewatch something I've already watched that I know will make me happy, which mm-hmm. is how you get someone watching Cutie Pie, like, almost ten times in one year, okay? <laughs> like, because sometimes you get sad and you just you just want to... You just want to watch your little no. baby fall in love. But... Now, one thing to take away from that for you is that Cutie Pie is a shorter show. Uh-huh. Yeah, right? It's 12, it's, 12 episodes. But they're, they're not shorter? They're not shorter no, no. episodes? Okay. No, they're, oh. they're like an hour long. It's a, okay. it's a regular, regular like show. The, wow. The, the, okay. The, that the, is way more. Yeah. The little, <laughs> sequel, the little sequel was only four episodes. Oh, okay. So <laughs> that was... It was good, guys. I enjoyed it. For anyone who's wondering, did you enjoy Cutie Pie 2? Um, but, but, but I will say that's... If, like, some people, if they did, if they were sad or needed to pick me up, you can kind of go for smaller stuff, shorter yeah. stuff. Or, I mean, the other thing is, you can skip a bunch of stuff if it's a rewatch. You don't have to watch the boring That's true. office politics. You can, you can watch just one watch couple. Yeah, exactly. You know, and like, you know what? You can often find edits of, like, just yes. that, yeah. that storyline. As far like, as... Who has been watching a lot of fan music videos of Island? Oh, I don't know. Oh, Maybe I don't know me. Okay. <laughs> what a mystery. I find about once once a year at least, I'll go back and one of my, you know, first Thai dramas was um Two Moons, which objectively not a good drama, but a very fun watch, very cute. And I will go back and it's like I know exactly almost to the time stamp of like episode like five or six and then you watch through to like eight like and it's just a good time in there and it's fun and all the good stuff happens and then you're like okay all right that was enough that gave me what i needed Mm -hmm. you can go do that with variety show episodes like Mm -hmm. i did that recently i was messing around with busted because i love busted but it is Mm -hmm. long it is long. Um, <laughs> it is very long. And there's this particular part where, like, it was kind of funny. There were snakes involved, real snakes involved, and uh, Parkman Young and Sijong, like, they were the ones handling it, and all of the men were just <laughs> shrieking <laughs> and falling down the entire time. And they are just terrified oh, so of good. the ladies being able to just be like, what? And just carrying around these snakes. I was like, ah, I needed some of that energy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That fulfilled yeah. the emotional need I had in that moment. And I turned it off. Like, I was like, that was yeah. fun. Thank you. <laughs> yep. And so I guess sometimes if you're in a drama rut or if you even have a desire to quote unquote rewatch something, you really might just be thinking of a particular moment in the show that you really mm-hmm. enjoyed, you can just go revisit that moment or revisit that couple of episodes or something if that mm-hmm. was the thing you're looking for to help you go about your day yeah. or mm-hmm. get you back into drama watching or whatever you need to do. Like, if, if that's the part you wanted, awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If there was a fight scene that was really cool and you got a kick out of it, go watch it. Go it's watch fun. it again, man. Or you can do like me, where I will do J-drama roulettes and just close my yes. eyes and scroll up and down many times and then, and then click. click. I just no. go for it. And then yeah. eventually, like doing that like multiple times, you find something that you're like, little. it's a little cute. And then like the next thing, or at least for me, like the next thing that I watch is like just super easy to watch. Because like I have a lot of times like I I'm like I just have that fear of pushing play like almost right. fear like where it's just like you just don't push play but like once I push play I'm fine but then you mm-hmm. kind of like put it off or you feel bad because you're like well I have to do all these other things and be an adult I shouldn't be sitting here like mm-hmm. watching a drama because I know that I'll just sit here and watch it for six hours straight right yep. It's tough being an adult doing adult things yeah, and then is. trying to make time for that subtitled content. Yeah. Being yeah. an adult. 
the right to yeah, take it out of. Ugh. Turning on like a Netflix English speaking movie, that's easy because you yeah, can things that you can have in the back. Look away, yeah. And it's like, <laughs> this is like the cycle because then it's like, well, learn the language, but like, what time? If I can't even find the time to watch the thing, <laughs> right? Yep. <sighs> then I'd have to watch learning content. My <laughs> my thing about. English language content is that I really love absurd, over the top, stupid English. I'm a big Riverdale fan. I think that'll tell you all you need to know about <laughs> the English watching content that I enjoy. Um, and I don't like watching it where anyone is around because I don't need people to listen and understand the absolute <laughs> yeah. nonsense that I enjoy. So I often will only watch it. When I am home alone with no one to judge me. <laughs> <laughs> That's also kind of kind of the funny thing is when you get used to watching a lot of subtitled content and content in another language than your um your native language. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> even, let's say that a show the way actors maybe said lines, maybe it was cringy. But the reality is you don't pick up on that because you don't speak that language, yeah. right? Yeah. So those vibes you don't pick up on. All of a sudden, you turn on English-speaking content. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and you're like, you get oh, all no. the nuance. Ooh. Of it. Oh, Ooh. Yeah. It, it's a tough jump. A lot of the times <laughs> I, do, I do know what I'm watching is cringy. Like, I know, okay? Yeah. I know. I know a lot of what I watch is totally cringe. And I'm free, so it's fine. <laughs> but like, as soon like so when I'm watching like this is my problem when I watch like a cringy like Filipino show, I can't I can't watch it with people around because when they switch to English, I'm like I don't need people to know the level of cringe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, but but that's that's what I'm saying. Like the yeah. the language barrier helps like just, just to soothe it. out soothe out that mm-hmm. type of thing. Yep. But like <laughs> I'm just saying. You know, because it is, it's of course objectively the exact same thing to go turn on an English speaking show of the exact same level, but it almost hurts more whenever yeah. you do it. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like true. psychic yeah. damage a little bit. Like, <laughs> but the reality is you should be cringe. You should be free. It's totally, yeah. it's totally fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm not yeah. knocking it. I'm just saying, that I've hit that barrier butt, before. Though. Like some people yeah. might like w- just watching the absolutely craziest weirdest show imaginal will just like pull you back and you're like this is what i was missing just this is to be like listen once you experience your first kimchi slap you're never the same or like you know those like really just like no effort just like sweet little dramas and you're just Mm -hmm. like that's what i needed i just needed something that like I could feel a little bit of happy emotion and I don't have to like process anything. I don't have to mm-hmm. think about it. It's just there. And just like that, like little thing is just like enough to like satisfy you. So you're then like, yeah, I'm out of this rut. I can pick, go pick up a couple of episodes yeah. or something. Well, mm. I think if you re if you rewatch something that you loved and then, like you said, you, you have that feeling in your, and it soothes that feeling for you, mm-hmm. but also that it maybe gives you that reminder of like, oh yeah, when I first got into dramas, this was the thing that I really liked. Mm-hmm. So, and I've I've tried to watch all the things, but maybe maybe I just need to go back and just watch those things for a yeah. while and like and not try to do all of it all the time. And or even for a time period, and you can always yeah. go back to more variety later. Or Absolutely. When I say variety, more genres, more mm-hmm. you know, tr- mm-hmm. pushing your boundaries more later whenever you have more time. Sometime. Yeah, like I, but, I think it's beneficial to like, you know, have variety in your watching and watching from different cultures and different countries and genres and that sort of thing. But like, also, if it's gonna like hurt your drama watching, like pull back and like. Yeah, not have that like a like massive amount of like all you just have too much stuff to like think about or like pick from and it's like get you overwhelmed Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you can always you know you can always move back and forth it's an amorphous thing you don't have to keep Mm -hmm. consistently doing Mm -hmm. all the genres one genre one country all the countries like you can bounce back and forth Mm -hmm. whatever time allows whatever your brain space allows or like sometimes it is Oh hey, I used to really like anime. 
What about <laughs> Just that? Just go back to anime. Yeah, go check I, out some anime. Go revisit some anime you really yeah. liked. I've been watching some anime lately. Some of that new stuff slaps. <laughs> like, they got a lot of isekai stuff. If you are a fellow isekai appreciate, you know, aficionado such as myself, there's some tight shit out there right now. Country, <laughs> let me tell you. I, uh, I just, sometimes, you know, like, when life is really hard, we were talking about just a little while ago, like, the comforting show. I just want to tell a little story of my own life that comes up a lot because it was so absurd. When COVID hit and I was stuck living in my coworker's basement halfway across <laughs> the country uh, from my husband because I was on a work trip when they shut down all the airports in Canada. Classic. Um, and Ingredients, the Thai show had just started uh. airing. That shit saved my life. Let me tell you, <laughs> it pulled me from a dark place. <laughs> like, just hand-washing porn and two men just sitting around chatting while one of them cooks. Oh. I, like, I yes. will say uh. this. It's not something that, like, you can, most people can do. But, like, early on in COVID, when we were, like, staying up for oh. the, like, music shows and seeing them yeah. live... That like helped a lot. Like, I, yeah. it's like not. It's really like a connection now, to like, like society that like, like so you're nice. Amazing. You're like, yeah, yeah, it might be five a.m., but well, it's kind of it's kind of purposefully finding something to get yourself excited, or something that is bringing you joy, yeah. or something to look forward mm-hmm. to, uh-huh. or. Or connect with your friends, because that was a big aspect of it. The fact that we would be watching some of those shows together and having yeah. fun with that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that made, a, that made a big difference. Or, like, so for me, like, I know that I'm probably not going to go to any physical concerts for quite some time. Mm-hmm. But just, like, I just bought a ticket to a little online concert, the last rock stars online concert. And I'm mm. with bandmate opener oh, wow. Hollywood. Oh, it's yeah. tomorrow. Like, of course this, when this airs, but uh, I'm as far as I haven't seen an online concert in a little bit, like they're just mm. haven't a lot of my mm-hmm. kids haven't been doing them. So like, I'm like, do, do I know some of these people? Not all of them. Am I going to have a good time? Darn right. I am. Mm-hmm. It'll be yeah. great. Like I don't want to miss sure. out. So, Sometimes just purposefully doing something different, even so specifically that I know that a lot of those, uh, that group is like a super band of visual K people. And I know that that's a rabbit hole I keep purposefully avoiding. So I'm warning right now, if my what we're watching stuff <laughs> next time is just like music videos, I... I'm sorry. No, <laughs> like, no apologies. No apologies for that. We are cringe. We are free. You know, we apologize for nothing. But I bring that up just anytime it's like, oh, if something is kind of like, oh, that seems fun. I don't know a heck ton about it, but why not? Give it a shot. Mm-hmm. Just try try mm-hmm. different things. Or just like I brought up like Dungeons and Dragons stuff. I've literally never yeah. done that. But whenever narratively I found some people like some creators that were making some mm-hmm. really good stories and hooked me because those stories were so good. Like Listen, that Pete Piper call of Brendan Lee Mulligan comes for us all. <laughs> it comes for us all. And Abria Iyengar, she'll get you there. Ooh, she'll, she'll get you there. Slipping. Slippery <laughs> slope. But just try try new stuff. Try new hobbies or like knitting or whatever people yeah. like. There's a ton no, of stuff to do. I was going to say, like, if you... If you have an old hobby that you've maybe put by the side and you want to pick that back up or mm-hmm. find, you know what? I find, um, like last year, I knit a scarf based off of like the, the Mito album covers and mm-hmm. like, you know, like I've mm-hmm. often when I'm watching dramas, I'll see somebody with a scarf and I'm like, Ooh, I bet I could knit that. And so like, re you know if you're a painter maybe there's a scene or something that inspires you like try combining your hobbies so paint the beautiful scarf or the beautiful seaside or the whatever like you don't have to just one or the other you don't have to just have one hobby at a time you can read and watch things and and find a balance in your life and do a little bit of everything and that's okay too so 
Heck, I make embroideries of my favorite makeup <laughs> hey, singers yeah. and my yeah. favorite drama actors, so. Well, that's also got to, like, help you, too. Like, if you're in a drama rut and you use that time for other hobbies, it kind of almost mentally, you don't feel, like, sad about being in a drama rut. You're now using it for another, like, very, like, worthy thing. Uh-huh. And so that, like, mm-hmm. can help you, too, because it's... Like, if you're in a drama rut and then you're not doing anything, you could feel the pressure of, like, being like, what am I doing? It's kind of just, like, wasting this time and, like, pick up the hobby that you haven't looked at in a while and and then mm-hmm. just use that time. It's almost like you got some free time back, so <laughs> you can use it for something else other than watching dramas all the time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think the key to any hobby and being willing to repick it up or put it down for a time or any of that is there's no reason to just guilt yourself over any mm-hmm. of these things. It's just like any other aspect of self-care in general. Um, just giving yourself space and patience and there's yeah. no reason to push yourself. Like even if you are in some communities for your various hobbies, maybe you're in book clubs or sewing circles or whatever you're in. If it's not serving you for a time, that's okay. Like you uh-huh. can you can take steps back, and you're still that doesn't make you less of being able to do the thing or being able to discuss the thing or being a drama fan or whatever it is. It's all fine. It's all good in the hood, man. I, I do th- <laughs> I, I do think the guilt. I think the guilt is sometimes the thing that keeps people from picking something back up. I think is, so too. And I think there's also like this sort of this mindset, this like grind mindset where like everything has to like somehow link back to some nonsense about productivity. So it's like you can't just mm-hmm. watch something and enjoy it. You have to watch it, then you have to analyze it, then you have to tweet about it, then you have to you don't have to. You can just fucking watch it and then move on with your life. You can just watch something and not tell anybody about it. Sometimes it's yeah, a secret. Just keep keep it to your damn yeah. self. <laughs> Listen, I, listen, I don't share everything I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, really. Half out of self-preservation, but, <laughs> but still. Like, you just don't want to talk about something. You just want to watch sometimes it. Sometimes you just, like, you just want to watch it and then move on with your life. Like, it's but I think fine. Also, sometimes there's a, a fear. Like, when you find a community, like mm-hmm. your Twitter community mm-hmm. or your book club or your whatever, there's a fear that if I... If I stop doing the thing i'm going to lose the people yes. too yes absolutely right? that's a, and, what i was gonna say and yeah that's hard right like it, especially if this is the it community really that scary. you have you don't want to lose that but most of the time the people who like you for the thing are still going to like you without the thing like yeah. they, they still like, 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 like to so. quote mama joe in her infinite wisdom if your friends don't like you because you don't want to do a thing with them, they're not really your friends. Get better ones. The yeah. people who just like you for you, not because you have the same interests. And I understand. I mean, my it one book is club, scary. Like, like yeah, you know, yeah. thinking that you might lose a community that you've like, you mm-hmm. know, grown with and like got, especially if you're like in a position where you don't have like a lot of access or you have like social like issues or something like that where like, this online community that you fostered is like kind of your biggest community. It's, it is scary. Like being like, well, if I'm not doing this one thing, I'm going to lose my friends. Yeah, but I think yeah. like a lot of times you'll realize that like those friends are also doing other things too, or will still be there. Even if you're not like doing that one thing with them. Yeah. Like in my right. one book club, there's a couple of people who never read the books. Like they just, right now they're in a place where they just don't have the time they don't have Mm -hmm. the capacity the books that are picked are never what they want to read but they stay in the group chat and chat and we're and they're like should i leave no like no you can stay and chat like you didn't read the book okay but we don't talk about just the book we talk about the book for two hours one day a month like the rest of the time we're talking about other stuff like and you we just be in other for stuff. Rants, so like you know? that's fine so to bring it back to drama ruts for a moment uh what we're basically i think what we're trying to say is don't stress out mm-hmm. about being in a drama rut or you know it just... happens to everybody really in some form of way yeah life mm-hmm. life will you will event 
if you're newer to being a part of that community, you will eventually encounter life will force you away from dramas for a time period. Like mm-hmm. that that is inherently going to happen even on a serious level. Like there's going to be something that for a couple days, for a week, for a month is going to take mm-hmm. you out of either having the headspace or the time to be able to handle that. And that is so okay yeah. <laughs> because mm-hmm. you need to deal with your life and you need to have grace on yourself. Like you cannot, there's no reason to have difficult expectations for keeping up with certain watching goals during a time period of your life that you just cannot do that. It's, it's fine. Don't worry about mm-hmm. it. Uh-huh. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> and, and there 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 may be some people that because of the way they consume media they they're like, "Man, I've never, you know, like Natalia you say you've never feel like you've had a drama run." And that's fine. Mm-hmm. But there are certain personalities yeah. and certain people have certain amount of time on their hand like it's all good. It's all if you're somebody that's like drama ruts aren't even an issue with me. Cool. I'm just saying that life sometimes takes people away, and mm-hmm. some of us might start feeling pretty guilt ridden about stuff. We're just encouraging do you it. to not do that. Yeah. Yeah. Free your, free yourself from guilt, especially about your hobbies. It's a hobby. You here to have, have some good times. Mm-hmm. But in in general, with stuff in your life, have flexibility with yourself. There's time periods where it's just hard to take a shower. You know, like just yeah. mm-hmm, just mm-hmm. try to take care of yourself, please. Like that's the that's really between me wanting to talk about drama ruts or reality for a lot of people, and I think it can be a very big mental difficulty thing. Mm-hmm. Please don't keep beating yourself up about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not because... to sound too too parasocial here, but like. We genuinely care about your mental well-being. <laughs> like, yeah. We genuinely do. Uh, yeah. Even if we've never met you, we genuinely want you to be having a good time out of life. So please don't stress out about yeah. dramas and yeah. about things. There's, and, there's... and if you, and nope. just like we were talking about earlier, if if you've been if your drama rut has lasted five years because everything seemed insurmountable, and if your life is now has time for you to maybe start taking little little bites out of it like maybe start doing dramas again just just do a little bit of time the 12 for 12 challenge is a good way of doing that or just do a little bit anything that anything small that looks a, shiny a movie, try it out like something mm-hmm. you know check check netflix or whatever your your prime or whatever you've got and just type like korea into the to be search bar and see what uh-huh. pops up and be like okay i'll watch that movie like okay, I like whatever. the looks of that poster. Let's see you. Yeah, yeah. let's see what it is. Drama specials, even just the mm-hmm. little YouTube specials that they have. Yeah. There's a lot of YouTube yeah. channels There's showing a lot. a lot of like dramas. They may be bad, but they also may be okay. But also, sure. they can be okay bad. And to to, <laughs> to change up the quote a little, they may be cringe, but they are free. So <laughs> hey. enjoy yourselves. Hey yo, I brought it back, y'all. Or like. <laughs> I know, for instance, currently on Tubi, there's uh, like Three Musketeers. Oh, that's so, like, a sometimes there's, <laughs> sometimes there's like an English based media that then you know. So you can always, if 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 you like, for instance, like My Fair Lady or whatever. Sometimes there's takes on that that you're not aware of, and so if you Google yeah. a little bit, you might be able to find. Oh, I'm way into such and such show. Well, there might be a K drama to go with it. Maybe not. Pride and Prejudice, the one that exists, is not about it, Pride and Prejudice. Not about Do not be fooled. <laughs> yeah. But there is a lot of enemies to lovers, just to say. Just put that out there. Just put that out there. You yeah. know, there's... I, I mean, if you're really big into things like, like Pride and Prejudice and Jane Austen stuff, a lot of a lot of the K drama rom coms of a certain time period have that kind of vibe, vibe. to them that right? they're very it's influenced like, you know in the eighth episode they hold hands and it's like <laughs> mind blowing because they touch fingers you're sitting there kicking your feet like, exactly <laughs> like yeah so it's that like super puritan kind of like victorian era <laughs> romance really does it for you you can find that in k dramas <laughs> It, it's it's there it exists but also like remember that like if you're a part of a community and if you've made friends in various ways online or whatever in these communities if you're in a rut for a while and if you not not just recommendation but if you, if you are like 
hey, do you want to watch a movie with me? Like, people will do it. People will be there. Just just set up a time. You can find people who you don't even know who will do it with you. They'll be like, yeah, Yeah. sure. I remember when when Rabbit was still a thing, which Uh, was just like a... And we would, like, like, we watched Train to Busan. We had, like... 30 people we'd never met who was mm-hmm. like, oh, I'll come watch Train to Busan. Well, like, y'all. Vicky, like, there's watch parties now that are, like, mm-hmm. just on the front page, so you can join yeah, in for most one. of those. That's a really great way to do it, because, like, then you don't even have to know the people, but, like, you'll have some people to talk to while you're watching. And if you like having people to talk to, you could always come check out one of our <laughs> live streams, and you can chat with people in the live stream. Real? We do one Join our week. Discord, because sometimes we have watch-alongs on the Discord, yes, we do. you can mm-hmm. chat with a group of people while we watch. We have a good so. time. So, yeah. We just want to encourage you, like, just don't put pressure on yourself. That was mm-hmm. another thing that I just really wanted to go over. No. But dr- drama ruts are the reality for a lot of people. I did want to say, I, I recognize that it's not necessarily... It doesn't plague everyone. But life mm-hmm. does plague everyone. Life yeah. will eventually <laughs> what, make you what, do what, something. What a positive outcome. <laughs> life is a plague of I was, For the record, I was smiling that whole time. <laughs> she, she, was, she was very she, cheery. <laughs> Man, life sucks, doesn't it, everyone? <laughs> Maybe Wait, I'm a little too fatalist all the time. I'm used to being, like, che- cheery like that. No, it was, it was just, we just <laughs> It's jokes, it's jokes. Uh, don't worry. Don't worry. But, hey, if, if, you've, if you've been in a drum rut or you feel like you need help getting out of one and, you know, if you need some extra help or whatever, mm-hmm. yeah, join our Discord or send us an email or Guns hop on tweet. Twitter. Oh, Twitter exists. if it just exists. If it still exists. <laughs> Listen Yikes. to some of our old episodes. Maybe yeah, you know, yeah. inspire Maybe you. Come, come to one of our live streams. I mean, oh, we have a great, good you can, me, a me, great me. way to find like an old episode that might inspire you. Like go to our website and in the search bar, like type a word and see what pops up. Because you never, sometimes you never it's know. the craziest things will pop up and you'll be like, oh, okay. They, you know, they have an episode where they talked about this. Okay. This is like a very limited version of like a Wikipedia tornado where you just click <laughs> yes. articles. It's like, yeah, you can go to our website and type in any words. See what comes up. No. <laughs> Do we have an episode just on colors? We do. Wait, <laughs> do you have one about umbrellas? <laughs> you better believe we do. Uh, so yeah on that note thank you for listening to us this week uh talking about something that plagues a lot of people don't drop our we hope you enjoyed listening to us and if you want to keep listening to us you can find us wherever podcasts can be found or you can go to our youtube channel where all of our episodes are or you can go to our website certifiednewness.com where every episode has a blog post that has time codes and links to stuff that we talk about uh, and you can listen to it right there on the website just you know go nuts uh, if you want to support this podcast you can go to patreon.com slash certified newness to join our certified fam- family which is our family on the web we love them they're wonderful we have such a good time uh, and we have movie nights we have extra little mini episodes that go up there just for patrons and also patrons get special badges on our discord which you don't need to be a patron to join anyone can join the discord it's free and fun and a good time uh, anyway we hope you had a fantastic week and you know keep it frosty just you know do do whatever you want to do you're, you're cringe and you're free so as always <laughs> wash your hands wear a mask and keep enjoying asian entertainment goodbye bye, bye. bye.